Get that. Parker gets his donut. <laughs> One. You had three today? <laughs> yeah, get on, Parker. Will you say something? Good to have you guys back. Amen. Got your Bibles? Amen. Got it. Open to Mark chapter 1, verse 14. I'll be there directly. Maris, thank you, man. Appreciate you. Man, I, our, uh, I got, like I said, I flew back in on Thursday night. I got back and lightning had struck and the office was, they were dead phones and, and uh, hookups and things laying everywhere and not knowing what's going to be working. The internet's fuzzy. You call, you can't hardly understand anything on the phone. And get over to my house and TVs, direct TVs, all shot, you know. And I asked Katie, my daughter, I said, you've been living here. I, I, I watch internet, you know. <laughs> she didn't even know the TV had shot, so I, I missed this week's um, uh, Outlaws show. So I got to find it from someone. But, uh, you know, just those things just happen, and it's just little anxieties, and a swimming pool, got a new motor, motor burn up, got to get it going, and it's kind of got air in the lines, and it's this, 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 and just so many dominoes, you got to fall. We got camp coming in two weeks, and then we picked up another camp of 250 kids. We hold 245, but we picked up 250, and I said, hey, y'all know that we don't hold that. Oh, we don't care, Pastor. We'll put cots out. We just want to have camp. Amen. So I love that kind of attitude. Amen. Just somebody just wants to have camp. So come on out. And I said, by the time we get to y'all, our bugs should be worked out. So a lot of things going on this week, plus continuation within our churches and believing God for the best. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah, the scripture, I can throw these at you. You already know most of these scriptures. If I had to mention some Psalms, excuse that, Proverbs 29, 18 says, where there's no vision, people perish. Where there is no vision, where there is no future, where there is no ongoing revelation of what's ahead in your life. You're going to perish. And those who have most powerfully and permanently influenced their generations have been seers, men who, have, who see more and further than others. Michael, your mom and dad, they're in the hospital right now. Father, in the Jesus' name, we lift up the keys to you. Lord, that precious couple, so much strength and power in their lives. We lift them up and we ask you to touch them in the hospital. Take away any of the lung issues, uh, the breathing issues. We ask God for health. We ask you for a purpose and length of life in Jesus' name. No one said? Amen. Amen. Moses endured by seeing him who is invisible. David Livingston said, I'll go anywhere provided it is forward. Who's David Livingston? He was a tremendous missionary who, who just had uh, great miracles in his life. He said, I'll go anywhere as long as it's forward. And I remind myself of these people moving forward, staying at it. The frontiers of the kingdom of God were never advanced by men and women of caution. And that's why when you hear me use terms like holy wild, I'm not just throwing something out at you. When I spell faith, R-I-S-K, I'm not just saying, trying to be cute. I'm trying to tell you that life is not about being cautious. Amen. It's about pressing forward. It's about moving into new frontiers. Amen. So I've used this formula and it seems to work absolutely faith plus works times enthusiasm equals success Amen. I'll say it again faith plus works Jim, James says, I, I know you've got faith. Show me your faith by your works. Amen. I want to see something in action in your life. So place plus works times enthusiasm. Enthusiasm is God in you, in Theo. When God's in you, it's going to manifest, not just at a football game. Come on. Amen. So a church with that kind of vision has to grow. So there are things that limit us. I mean, our past can limit us. And, it, you know, and, and I've said it before, many of us have had our lives so far in our past that, that we don't see our future. You've got to get your head out of your past. Can I get an amen? Yeah. Amen. Our pressures, motion, you know, motion makes friction. People say, Pastor, I'm moving, I'm doing here. Anytime you make motion, it makes friction. Progress involves risk. Criticism is something you can easily avoid. I'm going to help you. If you want to avoid criticism, it's pretty easy to avoid. Say nothing, do nothing, and be nothing. But if you want to be criticized, you want people to put you down, just start doing something. Amen. Start pressing and trying something different. So our, pro our problems can limit us. Our programs can limit us. Amen. Any program that decreases our faith or saps our energy will limit our growth. And let me tell you something about being your pastor. I have to monitor the programs and the ministries of both churches. And, and so doing that, I got to see, okay, which ones are bearing fruit and which ones are not. Hardest thing in the world is to say, okay, guys, y'all need to cut that and loose. It is, it's not doing anything but taking up somebody's time. It's important everything we do here bears fruit. Amen. 
Amen. If you've got a tree and you've got branches on it and it's got fruit hanging out here, that's a good thing. If there's no fruit, you've got to cut the branch. And it's, all, it's tough to be the, I don't want to ever be the one that does the pruning. I want Jesus to do that. Can I get an amen? We take care of the pruning because I'm going to get tired of people beating up on me because I said, no, y'all got to quit that. All ministries need to stay connected with the, with the vision, with, the vine, with you know, the vine. It's got to stay connected with Christ. And, you know, for our vision, W-I-N, win the lost, integrated nurture. I never forget that. I remind myself we got to win the lost. We're at church about winning the loss. One of the best things that happened to me this week when I found out my mother-in-law had passed is I knew she knew Jesus. I knew that not only was I her son-in-law, I was her pastor. Amen. And to pray with her. And they would tell you, they, they didn't have a spiritual life before they met the little country church. Amen. Until they were connected here. But then things started changing in their lives. Amen. So it's very important to know that our what we do here is going to matter. Our, our, our perspective Amen. No one lacks a field to work in. How do you say, well, Pastor, I, I don't know what to do. No one lacks a field to work in. They lack only the vision to see it. Everybody here has a field. And knowing what people need and want is the key to understanding them. And if you can understand them, you can influence them and impact their lives in a positive way. The issue is, is sometimes it's, it's just not like throwing a giant net out. You've got to know some people. You've got to know why they do what they do. I believe people want freedom. I believe that. I, I have traveled enough to tell you that when I walk into a grocery store or a mall, I see people that want freedom. They're tired of being told what they can and can't do. You, that's why you're an American. Can I get an amen? That's why we kicked the Brits back to Britain. Can I get an amen? amen. It, it, says it goes with We just love our freedom. And so when I understand that, and to live free and to honor the freedom givers, our soldiers and our Christ gave us freedom. My spiritual freedom came from Him. Our physical freedom, to even to preach the Word of God, came from our soldiers. Amen. Men and women who fought and died for this country. Amen. I'm on something. I'm a week ahead. I'm a week ahead. Amen. But understand, as the Father has sent me, Jesus said, it says, the Father has sent me, so I send you. So we are sent to reach people. We just need to create an opportunity. So this morning, I want to preach to you, all we need is an opportunity. And in life, I, I told the band in the back, one of the things I've struggled with, Pastor Richard, you know this, I don't like maintenance. And God gave us a place with 20 buildings on it. And they all need Church, two churches, and they all need. Amen. And then people whose lives aren't perfect yet, and they all need. I said, God, I don't like just do maintaining things. I want to make things. I want to stir some things up, make things. So that's why there is a muscle car Sunday, and that's why next week there's a biker Sunday. Amen. I want to keep reaching people. Can I get an amen? Amen. Just keep on reaching. Keep going after them. The first six statements Jesus made directing his own to spread the gospel as God sent me. And again, I tell you, Jesus never talks about being born. He talks about being sent. And when you understand that, you understand, you're, yes, you had a birth, and yes, you got a certificate and yes they took your little feet and put it in ink and stamped it on that little birth certificate so everybody yet you got a, a, a toe prints but the bottom line is you were sent from heaven Amen. with a particular dna for particular fingerprint particular purpose on this earth and when you come to here and you understand you were sent six times jesus made this declaration we have the same fresh calling as they were they were not an elite group mark chapter 1 verse 14 are you comfortable Preaching warp speed again today. Mark chapter 1 verse 14. After John was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee proclaiming the good news of God. Who's John? John the Baptist. Amen. Put in prison for pointing his finger at the king and rebuking him for sin. Put in prison. Never left prison. His head did, but he didn't. Mm. He went into Galilee proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said. The kingdom of God is near. Repent means turn around. Believe the good news. What's repent, pastor? To get back into the penthouse, to get to the highest place in life, to turn, amen, a 180 in life, amen, around. Say, God, forgive me for what I've done. And watch God put. Everything God does for you is to make you better, not bitter. Amen. When God searches you to take out things out of your life, he's not doing that to hurt you. He's doing that to help you. He understands your anxieties are tied to that, and he wants to bless you and promise you. The kingdom of God is near. Repent and believe the good news. And Jesus walked beside the Sea of Galilee. He saw Simon, which is Peter, and his brother Andrew casting that into the lake, for they were fishermen. 
I like, <laughs> this tickles me. If somebody's in a boat throwing a net, what are they? So the Bible says, you know, by the way, they were fishermen. You just want to make sure y'all understand if they're in a boat throwing a net, they're fishermen. Come follow me, Jesus said, and I'll make you fishers of men. And once they left their nets and followed him. When he'd gone a little further, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother, John, in a boat, preparing their nets. Without delay, he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men, and they followed him. I've often thought about the magnetism of Christ, that he could, he had just such an apostolic anointing that he could walk along the shores and point and pick out men who were working. By the way, if you want something done, always find people who are working. Don't find people that ain't working because they ain't going to help you because they're hunting for something to work on. Even though you could give them work. Just, just a thought. Lord, I thank you for the word of God. Let your anointing fall on us in Jesus' name. Everyone shout. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. He comes, so here they are. So he's got, he's got Andrew. He's got Peter. He's got James. He's got John. And he invites them along. And he says to them, from now on, I will make you fishers of men. And you know the story. Jesus worked, I mean, all the time on the disciples, helping them to understand. You know, the catch in, Mark, in Luke chapter 5, where they catch a great drought of fish. At the end of the story, uh, no, uh, no fish, oh fish, uh, go fish. You know the story at the end in, in John chapter 21. So they were nobodies that Jesus made into somebodies to reach everybody. And we'll say that one more time. They're nobodies that Jesus made into somebodies to reach everybody. What are you? You're, you're probably a nobody. You're somebody, which is probably a nobody that God's going to use to reach somebody. Amen. Somebody reached me, somebody reached you, and that's what we do here. So how do you do that, Pastor? How do we do it? First, become relational. Everybody say relational. Relationship. relationship. Amen. Allow the Father's heart to beat in us for the lost. You know, when I go, when I get on a plane, God puts somebody next to me, I'm thinking to myself, okay, this person God put here on purpose. So I'm going to talk to this person, we eventually I'm going to say something to them. And, of course, when the plane starts bucking and jerking, then that's a good time to start talking. Amen. To share with you. Relation is so important. You'll never win anybody to Christ personally unless you have a relationship with them. And a lot of us, we have a relationship. We just forget that this is a part of the calling of God in our life. And you've got to let the Father's heart burn in you. Hear me again. People, I, I don't have a plan B here. You either know Jesus or you don't know Jesus. And to fall in love with Jesus, I, I used to say that fear got me saved. Love kept me saved. If I was so afraid to go to hell, I didn't want to go. I heard about hell. I heard about the, 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 the lake and the, where the worm dies. Not Now, I know there's a push in the, in the church world right now to diminish hell, but I believe there's a hell. And I believe the hell is hot, and I believe Satan is going to be cast into there. I believe the angels are going to be cast into there, and those that defile and, and go against God will be cast into there. But on top of all that, I fell in love with Jesus. And I realized it was the love of God, amen, that brought Christ to the earth. Hallelujah. Everything about that. So stay in love with him. When you got a heart like that, now you got to become intentional. Go with the intent of seeing people's needs. Remember, everybody has a handicap. I never met anybody that didn't have a handicap. So they said, you know, that person handicapped. If I hung out with you long enough, I'd find out what your handicap was. Mm-hmm. Amen. Everybody got one. Most folk are disabled. You got a disability somewhere. I love this statement, don't diss my ability. Amen. Amen. When we work with children who are disabled out at the camp, knowing that my sister was born with disabilities, I have disabilities. Most folk do. Amen. If the truth of the matter is, if we all file for disability, we'd probably all get it. <laughs> but I'd rather keep working. Can I get an amen? Amen. So, so remember that. So accept our calling to the Great Commission. And you can do it. God in you. Amen. Can help you to do that. And be, uh, when I use the word forceful, I don't mean to be mean about it. But ask for the Holy Spirit's help. Ask God. Lord, give me, some, give me some advice. Tell me. I can't always tell you how. But how do I deal with this situation? Amen. To win this person to Christ. Amen. Give me some wisdom here. Again, the violent take it by force. And be practical. God is not calling us. So when I say that another one about being forceful, he's not calling us to get a bullhorn and stand on the corner and start preaching the gospel or screaming and condemning people or jumping up on a table at a restaurant and make everybody bow their head. <laughs> I know it. I've known people that way. That's normally going to get you thrown out of a restaurant. It's ineffective. Amen. We're, called to win. We're not called to win an argument and browbeat people. Neither has he called us to do witnessing, but to be a witness. 
He just told me to be a witness. So everywhere I go that my life witnesses his life. That's what's important. Amen. And then the potential. God has given all of us the same resources that Jesus had. Somebody said, well, Jesus had. Well, I know he's the son of God. But God, if he called Peter to be a fisherman, then surely I can be a fisherman. So you've got to consider your assets and our assignments. You, you've got to learn to ask. And to ask big. Amen. Our assignment is to reach and restore the lost. From now on, you're going to catch men. Our assets is strength from heaven. I believe in angels. I believe that angels protect us. I believe when that plane started bucking, I had angels in the plane with me. Amen. I just always have believed in them. I've never had a problem with anybody saying, you believe in angels? Yeah. Do you believe in a ghost? Yeah, a holy one. Amen. I, I believe in stuff like that. But assets, when I re read the scripture, Luke twenty two forty two 42 says, Father, if you're willing, take this cup from me, yet not my will but thine be done. Verse 43 says, an angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him. I believe heaven helps. But you got to ask for help. Amen. You got to ask for it. You know, I knew years ago, uh, Pastor Rich, you know, I, I coached basketball and I tried soccer and stuff like that. But, but uh, you know, I, I was a decent basketball coach and I loved it. And I knew the one way to lose a game is to get a lead and set on it. And it would drive me nuts every time I see teams do that. They get leads and just set on it. Amen. And I've seen churches do that. They get leads and set on it. Hey, we got, hey we're paid off. No debt. Got people that are tithing and giving. We're taking care of ministries and, and missionaries. Got the light bill taken care of. Let's just coast through life till everybody dies off. I have not that mentality. My mentality is to reach, reach, reach. Keep reaching. Keep believing. Amen. And stay with it. Don't ever set on a lead. Amen. Keep believing for the best. Because as soon as you do, you're going to lose. Fireball, you're going to lose. Don't set on a lead. Keep hitting home runs. Keep running them bases. Keep making them shots. Keep standing up there. That's what's important. So our responsibility, the evangelistic harvest, it's always urgent. The destiny of men and of nations is always being decided. Every generation is strategic. We are not responsible for the past generation. I would love to tell you we are, but we're not. We're responsible for our generation. Amen. And where we stand and where we're at. You know, I, I've looked at the kids. I've talked to my kids. I said, you know what? I'll be dead and gone when i got to deal with that. I still have not. I still don't use my phone to this most tremendous potential of smartphoneishness. <laughs> Amen. I don't know exactly how, but I, I, I you know, I, I was in the truck with my daughter a year or so ago, and, and, and she said, Dad, who's your favorite singer? I said, well, you know, I like this guy, Jamie Johnson. I really like his voice, you know, and how it booms out there. And she, and she said, okay. She grabbed her phone, and within a few minutes, she looked back at me. She said, uh, you, you'll get it in the mail. I said, I'll what? She said, you'll get it in the mail. I get what? She said, you'll get his latest CD. It's coming in the mail. It's going to be coming to your house. I said, I ain't even in a store. She said, Dad, I just bought it on my phone. It's all good. You're going to get it in the mail. <laughs> See, this is a generation I know not of. <laughs> Amen. I know mine. <laughs> We're the ones that turn porch lights on and turn them back off in the morning. We're the ones that lock our doors at night and got big dogs. Amen. That's our generation. We like to burn rubber. We don't like electric cars. If we want one of them, we'll get a golf cart. <laughs> that's my generation. Amen. There's, there's, that's my, but there's a generation coming after us that I do not understand. Amen. And that's what you're going to be responsible for. Hallelujah. Let me deal with mine. Peter caught a lot of fish. One occasion, 153 fish. Amen. One occasion, the net is full and the boat is tipping over. He was a man that understand fishing. They, that's why when they fished all night and caught nothing in Luke chapter 5, he pondered the thought, why have I caught nothing? And then Jesus said, cast your net on the right side of the boat. You know the story. Amen. But he said to him, from now on, you'll catch men. From now on, you're going to catch men. Now, listen. I was with my father-in-law. And he, that their backyard literally is, is a small lake. And he loves to fish. So I went out there and sat with him while he was fishing on the back. And, and he sat there, and he's a fisherman now. He understands fishing. So he's, he's got this big old bucket there next to him. And he dumps it out, and he starts going through it. And he's got lures, and he's got worms, and he's got all them things, David, did you and James, and all you guys understand. And so he's throwing all the fish and stuff out. And he looks at me, and he says, people come here to hang out with me, and they bring this stuff. This stuff right here will not catch the fish that's out here in this lake. I, I know that. He said, I know the fish I'm fishing for. So I'm watching him. I'm observing. And so he, fact, he puts it all on there. Then he reaches and he grabs a Cheeto. Yes, a Cheeto. 
that gets the yellow on your fingers, Cheeto, orange on your fingers, and he puts it on the end of his line, and he throws it out into the water. Now, I'm watching this, and I'm observing a man who understands what he's fishing for. All of a sudden, the line pulls taut. The tip goes down. He jumps up to his 88-year-old feet, and he starts moving along the dock, and he's reeling, and I'm, I'm trying to keep him from falling in, and he's happy. He's pulling in, and I'm running down on the little miniature dock. Here comes Lori down there with her net. Hey, man, he's pulling. All of a sudden, I, I'm seeing color. I watched that tuna show. I know about that. Yeah, I saw color. Amen. And here it come a big five-pound catfish come up from, and he, they reach down and get it. He's just smiling, thumbs up, you know. God, how'd you catch on a Cheeto? And I thought to myself, Lord, no wonder we're not catching folk. We're not throwing the right bait to them. Amen. We need more Cheetos. Hallelujah. So when you're fishing, you've got to use the right tackle. Specific fish must be lured with specific bait. And you understand being around your pastor all these years, that's why I use Harleys and hot rods and horses and anything I can to win somebody. You've got to consider that every soul is going to require something different to reach him or her. You've got to be willing to change the tackle for every situation. You, you, have to, you can't assume that one set of tackle is all we need to reach everyone unless you're one of them snaggers. You ever met a snagger? They just throw the fish and yank it. Amen. And it gets you in the side. They hurt you. They don't help you. They hurt you. Amen. And they'll just pull in anything. They don't care. What it is. They're just trying to snag the fish. That's illegal. Amen. I became all things, Paul said, that to all men that I might win some, whatever it takes. So some things that you got to do. Always throw your lure toward the front of the boat. When you throw behind the boat, you, you increase the risk of breaking the line and losing the fish. I learned this from being with bass fishermen. Amen. They always stand on the front of the boat. They're casting in the front. Always moving to the front. When we go after souls, we got to continually reach forward. Amen. In our soul seeking. When we're not fishing, we're fighting. If you're on a boat and you run out of bait, look out. You better get back to shore. Because it ain't no fun being in, in, on, a, on a boat with a fisherman without bait. That's when things get ugly. And I see churches, they forget they got bait, and they start infighting one another. And yang, 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 yang. And they got board meetings. And yang, yang, yang. And then they split the church. And yang, yang, yang. And they forget the whole purpose of being the church is winning people to Jesus. Wow. Amen. And learning how to be fishers of men and going after people, not backing away. Don't get to heaven knowing that you never want anybody to Christ. Don't let that condemn you, but let that motivate you. Amen. I've got so hold on, Pastor. I didn't win anybody. Oh, you may not have, but did you sow seed? Yes. Yes. Did you water the seed? Because I'll remind you, I, I really never won anybody to Christ. I've sowed seed. I've heard people say, Pastor, save my soul. I didn't save your soul. I don't want nothing to do with your soul, your spirit, or you as far as winning you, because that makes me responsible. I want to sow seed. So Paul said, He said, Some sow seed, some water, but God gives the increase. Right. Amen. So don't beat yourself up, but I want to encourage you. I I'd love for you to be the one who hears the confession of faith and somebody turning their life around and seeing that 180 turn. That's a powerful thing, Kyle, when you see that happen in somebody's life. Amen. That that's wonderful. So when you're fishing, make sure you're throwing it forward. When we go after souls, you got to continually reach forward. Many times our special events and programs need to reach people during the event. Like next week, we will have an event. And I pray you're inviting bikers, but they don't have, you don't have to have a bike to come. Amen. You don't have to. You don't have to have a hot rod for Muscle Car Sunday. Amen. You just need to be in attendance with us to help motivate and participate and give God glory. I believe sometimes if people who did not know Christ can see people giving God glory and worshiping God and loving God and they realize that there's something greater and there's a void inside of them that needs to be filled by only God himself. If they could see that in you, then, my friend, you become the witness. Uh, next, we'll always use the right bait the right way. Different color styles, designs of bait are used for different cover and atmospheric conditions. I, I didn't understand this. As a, I, I'm really a non-fisherman. I will go fishing with you if you promise me we're going to catch. <laughs> How many, any, any, everybody take that deal, won't you? <laughs> I take that deal all day long. Amen. So that, that's always important. Uh, unlike my friend Richard Golightly, who never caught anything when he went. And the only reason I say that because I know you're watching, Rich, <laughs> up in Arkansas. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll get a text right after church you watch. 
One message is given, but there are many methods to be used. You got to use them wisely. Our, our message is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. It's never changed. The message always the same. Method changes. Some people, they get, get discouraged because well, that method's not right. You know, Paul says, as long as they're preaching Christ, leave them alone. As long as they're preaching Jesus, leave them alone. So always keep moving in your fishing. Amen. Always keep moving. Always keep looking for what I was out with uh, your dad, Jessica, and we were fishing. And I, I mean, we're in one spot. And I'm thinking, this is good. Next thing I know, he's moved to the next spot, next spot, next spot, next spot. Listen, you got to go and find the hot spot. Amen. Where it's really happening. And that's what I'm constantly looking for. When, when God sends revival, you watch out. I've been in the midst of it. I've seen God touch people's lives and turn them around. You know what I find? That people are tired of religion and they want freedom. A tired of religion, they want freedom. They, and they want to be able to make their own decisions about things in life. The scripture says you work out your own salvation with prayer and trembling. You need to pray about it. You need to be nervous about it. Amen. Well, it's not my place, but you got to do that. And when people start finding freedom, they find church where they can just be free and love him and feel mercy and feel like family. I commend the little country church. I do because people say all the time, it's a friendly outfit. Amen. People friendly in that church. Amen. And that, that blesses me because that's what I believe we need to be. Keep fishing when the wind's blowing hard. Oh, what a week we've had. Whew, I'm up there in Utah. It's 60 degrees, no humidity, blue skies. And I look on the weather map of Houston, Texas. And anxiety, and I'm not big on anxiety. You know, I don't worry about a lot of stuff. But that anxiety starts to build, and, and then I get the word that the rain keeps coming. I flew out in a rainstorm. Amen. So here it comes, and I'm thinking about the camp, and I'm thinking about the flooding situations we've had in the South Texas. And, I, and Kenneth calls me from over in Derrida, Louisiana, and he said, my goodness. He said, I know I just saw Noah go by. He said, it's bad over here in Lake Charles and Derrida. And I think, oh, Lord Jesus, go, you got to help us out one more time. I hate to... I don't want to pray it on somebody else, but I'm so tired of somebody praying it on us. <laughs> Amen. And so watching that rain give up. Amen. And here's the thing about storms. You know, you can say, well, I got to quit. You, you got to keep fishing when the wind is blowing. There'll never be the perfect time. Amen. I, I have seen, on the area of fishing, I've seen people catch fish when things were terrible. Even when the weather's not, it, it, there's something about witnessing for people and witnessing and winning people to Christ, even when things are bad. It, during death, sorrow, dissolution of, of marriages, all type of things can happen in life, but you got to keep fishing. Your kids are acting up, you got to keep fishing. You can't quit. Amen. The biggest mistake is when it's stopping it. Amen. We often withdraw our outreach when the winds and waves are contrary. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 4. He that observes the wind shall not sow. He that regards the clouds shall not reap. If you see the wind's coming up, you get scared. Sowing seed. So, I, I, you know, when you sow seed, as you drop the seed into the ground. But, but if the wind's blowing, it can take the seed anywhere. Have you ever seen anybody inadvertently give their life to Jesus? Because the wind was blowing when you were sharing with somebody else and the seed blew over here and hit Travis? That's what he's saying. Just because you see the wind blowing, don't you stop sowing. You keep on sowing. You, keep, you don't understand sowing seed. Amen. Uh, helping. Being a blessing. Amen. You keep right on sowing. Even when it's bad, you keep right on sowing. And he that regards the clouds shall not reap. You see the clouds coming. Well, I can't go get a harvest. Listen, when I see the clouds coming, it's time to gather in the harvest. Amen. It's time to move after it. it my friend, it was when Moses was confronted at a Red Sea, he kept fishing. It's when Goliath was blowing that Dave kept fishing. It was when Jericho was shut up that John Joshua kept fishing. It was when the walls were collapsing that Rahab kept fishing. It was when the fish swallowed him that Jonah kept fishing. Hallelujah. It was when the prophets of Baal were screaming and cutting themselves that Elijah kept fishing. Amen. It was when the waves were high that Peter kept fishing and walked on the water. With his back against the cross, Jesus kept fishing. Joseph, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. Today, you'll be with me in paradise. Hold on, sir. You've just been lied about, deceived, betrayed, spit upon, beer pulled, nailed to a tree, dropped into the ground. And what do you want to do? Remember me when you come into your kingdom. 
today, you'll be with me in paradise. One more for the kingdom. You don't understand, Pastor, I'm hurting. It's all about me right now. I'm hurting. My life is, is narrow. That's all I see is me and my hurts and my pains. You need to keep fishing. One of the greatest joys in your life when knowing that when you get to the kingdom, you got somebody with you. Amen. You need to keep on fishing. Scripture tells us, Jesus said, don't be afraid. From now on, you'll catch me. There is an anxiety. There is a fear. There is a, what if they reject me? But what if they don't? I promise you, you're going to get rejected. Some of your family are going to reject you. I'm not talking about trying to get people in church, by the way. I'm, I'm praying they get in church. I'm praying they find a church. God's biggest love on this planet is the church that you're in. Not just a little country. I'm talking about the universal church. He loves the church. Amen. He, everything he does to me is, out, is from a church. I'm just church crazy about church. But on the flip side, it's about giving one's life to Christ and then helping them find a spiritual home. Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 19 says, For what is our hope? Our joy or the crown in which we will glory in the presence of our Lord Jesus when He comes. Let me say it again. For what is our hope, our joy, or the crown in which we will glory in the presence of our Lord Jesus when He comes? In other words, there will be presidents and potentates and, and in your lifetime governors and political figures and great sports figures. They're going to be, but that's, that, that's just temporal. The eternal is the king. When he returns, when we see him, what is it? What is our joy? What is our hope? What is the crown in which we will glory in the presence? Will it be the fact we drove a Ford our whole lives? Will we glory in the fact that we built marvelous buildings? Will we glory in the fact that our children got straight A's in the second grade? Will we glory in the fact that our dog could whoop our neighbor's dog? Will we glory in the fact what are we going to glory in? Oh, no, no. What are we going to glory in when he comes? Is it not you? Is it not you? It's the fact that my crown is the people that I... There's a, there's a, a soul winner's crown that we glory in. That when I get to heaven, Barbara Kaufman will have a new God-made suit, not the one that was wore out here on this earth. When I get to heaven, then I see your wife again. When I get to heaven, I look around, I'll see Ron Gant. I see y'all's mama. I see people that were part of this house that gave their lives to Christ because somebody sowed a seed, somebody watered, and Christ brought forth the increase. That's what we're going to glory in. Amen. Indeed. You are our glory and joy. Philippians 4.1 Therefore, my brothers, you whom I love and long for, my joy and my crown. He called us His crown. Amen. That is how you should stand firm in the Lord Jesus. Amen. Stand firm. My crown. We become the crowns. You got to become soul conscious. Turn ordinary moments into soul winning opportunities. God, all we're looking for is an opportunity. Just give us an opportunity. And if we don't get one, let us make one. Amen. Let us make one. We govern the nations on our knees. We pray every morning for God to give us a soul. For you to lead to Him. A divine appointment. Jesus said, go into the highways. He said this after the wealthy would not show up at a banquet. So He says, go into the highways and the byways. Compel them to come in. Focus on the word compel. Whatever method to get them. I've had people criticize me, criticize our church. You should have a car show. I'll take you back to years ago, Rich. We did one with hula, hula skirts. I remember I didn't have a tent. I wanted to do a car show. I didn't have a tent. We had two buses. And somebody said, Pastor, we got a tent. We can stretch over them two buses. And we probably put 150 people in that little tent for the car show. I said, let's do it. We stretched that termite tent. Let me say it again. We stretched a termite tent. 
I never even heard of a termite tent until I came to Texas. You know they'll stretch them things over a big house and they flood it with chemicals to kill the termites in the house. When the guy said he had a tent for me, I didn't know it was a termite tent. We stretched it over to two buses. We had church in there and everybody lived. That's you crazy. You do, do, do. Listen, whatever method, whatever bait, whatever it takes, criticize me now. Because when I get to heaven, Craig, I'll see the crowns. I'll see what God has done. So let down your net. Get a bigger net if you need to. Get ready for a bigger catch. You're going to get all types. Amen. And take advantage of every opportunity. I close with just a few quick thoughts. First, to be an achiever, you got to reject rejection. You got to reject reject. People will reject you. They'll reject what you do. Reject rejection. Amen. Just say, you know what? I, that, that's, that may be you, but that ain't me. Achievers reject it. Two choices when we fail. You can internalize, blame yourself, feel worthless and lovable, or you can externalize. Don't take it personal. For how many years have I said, shake it off? Just shake it off, man. Somebody don't like you, just shake it off. Somebody don't like the fact you got hair, just shake it off. I was running through the rain the other day and I thought to myself, <laughs> Clanton, <laughs> there's certain folk that ain't got to be worried about this moment. But I am one of them. Achievers see failures as temporary. People who personalize failure see a problem as a hole they're stuck in. But achievers see any predicament as temporary. Achievers see failures as isolated incidents. When achievers fail, they see it as a momentary event, not a lifelong epidemic. I have failed in so many ways, trying things, working in things. Can I be honest with you? I have no idea that next week will be a success. I have no idea. But if someone gives their life to Christ, if there are people that give honor to the fallen, it'll be a success. And there are tears in the eyes of people when they understand the freedom we've got to do what we do. My goodness, guys, I have, a, I, have a, I have a license to carry a gun. Try that in England. Try, try that in Chicago. <laughs> I love Texas. Love it. Love this place, man. I want to give God glory for that. So I pray next week is a success. But if it's not, well, we are looking for an opportunity. But it's going to be up to us to make it happen. Amen. Achievers are visionaries with poorly developed sense of fear and no concept of the odds against them. <laughs> Have no, if you've ever started a church once, twice, three times, you'll understand that the odds are always against you. It's always against you. I don't need another church. It's been fished out. It's been fished out. There's too many churches around here. Then I hear the voice of Jesus. Cast your net on the right side. Yeah, it looked fished out until all the fish started jumping in the net. People started finding a home. Started feeling loved. Colossians 3.23 says, Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart. As working for the Lord, not for men. Since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. So here comes that big question, Keith. Why do we need an inheritance in heaven? Why do we need an inheritance in heaven? It's becoming clearer and clearer to me that our inheritance is probably those that we have won to Christ and that we will see again. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Faith plus works Times enthusiasm equals success. Faith in God plus works on this earth. Times enthusiasm, God in you equals success. If you're not sure of your salvation, be sure today. If you're not sure, put your hand in the air and pull it back down. Me and God to see it. Thank you. Anyone else before we pray?
Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Together with me, please. And those that lifted their hands, hear me well. Lord Jesus, wash me with the blood. Forgive me. Thank you for your mercies. What I really need is to understand my purpose. Why I'm here. It's more than what I'm doing now. Help me to be a catcher of people. To learn how to fish for eternity. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on, give God praise. Sometimes I look at the, the clock back there and I get revelation. First revelation, I got to go the long way to get to the church because the road's closed up here. Because the river. Second revelation is I got eight minutes to get out of here to make that next church. So very quickly, if you need to tie the offering envelope, it's in the pew in front of you. If there's somebody in front of you that does not have one, needs one, y'all lift your hand, they'll get it to you because I know the front rows are a little absent from that. Next week from 8 o'clock to 12 o'clock or 8 o'clock till we're done, we're going to have a work day out at the ranch. Okay, a work day out at the ranch. We got to put American flags up, MIA flags up. We got to put up uh, first responder flags. We're going we're gonna to decorate the place. We want people when they drive in to understand this place loves America. We love those who have, have uh, that love you, Jesus. Amen. We'll have church in the tabernacle. There'll be a place for the bikes to park, prefer preferably. Amen. Some did say they might drive their hot rods out. You just park with everybody else, but you're sure welcome to come out. We're going to try to ha start service there by 1045, no later than 11. We will have church here that morning. Amen. And encourage you to come out. Amen. And be a part. You're going to eat lunch somewhere. You might as well come eat lunch with us. So they say, you don't like hot dogs? Uh, that's not American. My generation, David called me last night and said, Pastor, what you doing? I said, I just finished eating a foot-long hot dog from Sonic. I'm practicing for next week. <laughs> so honestly, I haven't, I haven't bought a hot dog in years. I worked for the Sonic, you know, for years. So uh, your giving is so important today. If you're giving online, show your phone when the, when the servant leaders come by. Those that are watching, please give online. Your, your tithe and offering is a, is a show of your honor to God. That's what it's about. It's honoring God. I'm honoring God with a tenth of my income. Amen. I thank God for that. And watch him bless the rest. I, I don't have to know how he does it. I just know he does. I've often said I don't know how aspirin works, but when I get a headache, I can't pray away. I take an aspirin. And somehow it works. God gave somebody wisdom enough to figure that out. So as we give today, we're believing God for? More money, less hours, benefits, sales and commission, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money, bills paid off, settlements, inheritance, rebates and returns, debts demolished, royalties received, favor and success to the kingdom. Amen. You may be seated just for a little bit. Okay. 1485 just opened? All right. Well, then I got two extra minutes. David, come on up. Let me just show you guys this. You know that you can go online to holywild.net slash shop. This is our shirt of the month. Light of fire in my soul, the little country church. Amen. So if you want one of these, you can go online. I think it's 20 bucks. Get you a... In other words, now we don't have to store the shirts. You can go online and get your own shirt. Amen. Have it delivered to you just like I did that Jamie Johnson CD. Hallelujah. So there it is. We, we're learning how to work on that. We'll put this back in the store. Amen. Guys, thanks for coming today. Good to have you all here. Hallelujah. All right. Give it up for your pastor. All right. We have Biker Sunday next week, May 